The United States had three bomb sites in World War II. The Norden bomb site, the Sperry bomb site, and the Estapi bomb site designed by George Estapi. Everyone is familiar with the Norden bomb site and there is much data and video information available. Somewhat lesser information available on the Sperry bomb site and almost none on the Estapi bomb site. There were eight versions of the Estapi bomb site, and this is the final version, the D-8. Although not as precise as the Norden bomb site, it was useful at lower altitudes and air speeds. And many of these were rushed into production due to the shortage of Norden bomb sites during World War II. It is a far simpler mechanism than the Norden or Sperry bomb site. It consists of a mechanism for setting trail, a, a guide wire here to set the drop angle, and a timing mechanism for entering time of fall information. There is a crank here which when rotated backwards winds the timing mechanism and when rotated forward activates the timing mechanism and synchronizes the front crosshair on the target. After the timing mechanism has expired, the handle becomes locked and the front crosshair no longer moves and the bombardier shifts his vision now from the upper crosshair to the rear one. And it is the point of intersection with the rear crosshair that the bomb is released. The bomb site does manage to adjust for drift and you can see that moving the bomb site changes the indicator there but also changes the little indicator here at the top. Here you can see that the time mechanism is set back until it locks. The rear handle is rotated back to neutral. And then when the handle is turned forward, after setting the time of fall information, the timer is activated. And you can synchronize on the target until the timer locks out again. And now the handle can no longer be rotated. We will be simulating a bomb run from 20,000 feet at an airspeed of 200 miles an hour with a thousand pound bomb, which gives us a drop angle of 40. And so we set the drop angle at 40. We turn our timer until it locks out. And then we wind the mechanism. trail, if any, is set here. We see from the bomb tables that the time of fall will be 37 seconds and so we set this to 37. We'll be using a moving map display here and focusing on this silver disc. To acquire the target, you sight through the upper wire here, down through the lower wire. When the target is acquired, the hand crank is then rotated, activating the timing mechanism. And the crank must be rotated to keep synchronized on the target. 
Did Baba Deer adjust the speed of his rotation to synchronize and keep the crosshairs on the target until the timing mechanism locks out, at which point he cannot turn the crank anymore. Now, the vision is shifted from the first wire to the second wire. When the target intersects the crosshairs of the second wire, the bombs are released.